And also take a look at this lightning in slow motion kind of snaking across the sky here and a pretty amazing video. This is just into the Weather Channel today. This lightning video is slowed down so you can see just how spectacular it is as it inches across the sky. This actually happened in the Netherlands yesterday. Now, did you know there's such a thing as slow and fast lightning? We'll explain the difference in the two coming up in about two minutes. And welcome back to Weather Center Live. Kelly Cass and Paul Goodlow here with you for this Tuesday evening. Yeah, we're still tracking storms across parts of Kentucky, even the Atlanta metro area. Still, a couple of cities still keeping a close eye on thunderstorms rolling across the area. Let's head it over to our storm tracker, Jim Cantori, to break down who's seeing what and for how long. Hey, Jim. And guys, just got an email from uh, from James Dinnan out there at the at the news desk. 39,000 in Tennessee. 17,000 Kentucky, 7,100 in Georgia, North Carolina about 3,600, Florida 9,600 without power. So we've had an active day uh, with storms, a lot of people impacted. And now Indiana as well, right here on the nose of this jet coming uh, up into Indiana and Illinois. Check it, check it out. You can see what's going on in through here. We've got uh, tornado warnings out uh, at the present time for our friends in Green and Martin counties. As a matter of fact, we had a confirmed tornado about 10 miles to the south of Broomfield. Now, we've also we got two tornado warnings out here, which is kind of interesting. So you've got one cell that's out on its own, which I'd have to get a look at the high definition radar to see what's going on with that. And then I think this is what was warned on uh, near Bloomfield. So let's go ahead and get into this here, guys. Show me the show me the high resolution radar and uh, show me the, some of the storm relative here. So again, two storms that have been tornado warned on. Given the movement here, watch out around Colleen. Here's the Bloomfield area. So when it was warned on, it, or, or when it was spotted, I should say, it's down here. It is now north. If there's a tornado, it is now north of, uh, or, or yeah, just to the north of Bloomfield, which is uh, obviously crossed over some highway. And it looks like it's heading toward Worthington. So watch out there in Worthington, Indiana. There has been a confirmed tornado with the Bloomfield storm. It was confirmed down to the south here. So here's what it looks like right now. Uh, so it looks like probably, uh, you know, a quick spin up which is on the leading edge of that gust front there and uh, driving off toward the east we can get those on those line uh, echo wave patterns not surprisingly check that out salt lake city we've had some pretty big wind here look at this white sage sensor here out here in the desert dugway 77 miles per hour that's some big wind here and so now the warnings are out south of salt lake city for uh Tuelli or I should say south of the downtown area uh, in first to Tuelli and also Salt Lake County. So watch out guys around uh, Utah. Uh, also uh, American Fork, Lehigh, Pleasant Grove as the storms continue to move east. Looks like they're kind of, they've pulsed up and they're kind of weakening a little bit, but still probably capable of some wind. And we had some big storms in through here uh, in Philadelphia, not severe kind, but mostly rain kind. Some very heavy rain earlier in downtown Philly. As a matter of fact, the infield at Citizens Park was flooded. And uh, Kelly tells me the Phillies are home tonight. They're actually still, they're, they're, they're playing again, but uh, the infield absolutely flooded there. So the good news is these new parks, they drain so well. Even with a one inch to two inch per hour rainfall, they uh, actually uh, cleared, it thing, cleared that thing out pretty well and are underway in baseball again. All right, you can see the bow in through here, a little backwards see another one down toward Moorhead in Kentucky. These are the two that are warned on coming up toward the Ohio River. This one coming over the Ohio River now. And watch out around Hillsboro, Ohio. Looks like the apex of that bow is coming coming right up toward you. Notice they didn't warn on the whole bow up here. They actually warn on just where it's starting to curve or the maximum curvature is. That's where the damaging wind threat is. Same thing with this one. There may be a couple of areas where we actually have that. So you see the jet kind of diving in there. Well, every time Sarah moves this, she can't, uh, I can't draw on it. But you can see here where, you know, where we're seeing both of these areas uh, just driving off toward the east. Uh, certainly could get some wind 60, 70 miles per hour coming up toward Huntington, Virginia. Uh, Pikesville, you'll have some severe weather as well more than likely uh, gusty winds, but not of the bow variety. And look at these storms lined up just to the west of Bristol now. This is the stuff that'll move through you, and it'll move through probably within the next 30 minutes or so. All right, let's talk about uh, lightning here. Kelly showed you some awesome video at the top of the hour, and we talk a lot about uh, speed of lightning. Of course, if you don't slow video down, you, there's no way you can really it's all moving fast, right? I mean, light moves at uh, phenomenal rates of speed, which are very uh, undetectable by at least the human eye here. But when you have a camera and you can slow it down, you can see the lightning moves. It almost, it's like a, you know, it goes in these jagged curves. So you have two forms, step leaders and return strokes. Now the step leaders typically go a lot slower because they're moving through all these ions and they're carving out a path. So you're trying to connect the positive charges with the negative charges. And as they kind of move, 
move across the sky. They're carving through all those ions. Now the return strokes are going to go a lot faster because that, that path is already carved out. All right, so you'll typically see that when you slow down the speed. But this is in cloud lightning versus uh, ground strokes, but it is awesome nonetheless. Look at this, right there, step leader. <laughs> Making its way very slowly across. Then the return stroke coming back uh, is, is very, very fast once it happens. All right, guys, again, watch out to, in Greene County. We've got a tornado warning, and we have a confirmed tornado earlier on south of Bloomfield, which is now heading toward Fair Play and Worthington. Uh, tornado again on the ground confirmed by the public, not uh, by storm spotters, as uh, Jen Watson tells me. So here you can see the couplet with this. Very strong uh, rotation. Uh, uh, go to the normalized rotation for me, if you would, Sarah. I want to see the normalized on this. All right. It's not super tight, but certainly evidence of something there. Uh, quick look at the correlation coefficient. I want to see if we got any debris being lofted. No. Not, nothing that tells me that we still have a tornado on the ground. Go back a couple of scans here, about maybe 15 minutes. I want to see what this looked like when it moved north of Bloomfield. And we'll see what happened with this. So, again, guys, what's, whatever's coming is going to go right into the Worthington area. Right now, it doesn't look like there's any tornado on the ground. There's a little hint at something. If I show the... Cor show the uh, storm relative velocity here and we can get an idea of how we match these up. So what, what, what you would typically do as the radar operator is look where you have the best rotation. Looks like it weakened a little bit near Bloomfield. Uh, the tornado was sighted south of Bloomfield about 10 miles. Then it looks like it weakened a little bit. Then it may just start to crank up again. But here's a newest scan that comes in. Very widely dispersed normalized rotation. Nothing here that tells me we've got a tight couplet or, uh, or a tornado on the ground. So uh, good news. Good news there. But the fact that we have a tornado warning uh, and the fact that I still see rotation within the, mo the mesocyclone itself, you need to be uh, careful in Worthington because it's right on your doorstep uh, right now and potentially it's going to move past Worthington. So don't be surprised if we actually see the warning also extended off toward the north. All right, guys, that's it uh, from the update desk. Let's go back to Paul. All right, thanks, Jim. And again, let's take a look at the entire area because we are expecting severe weather. Severe thunderstorms from watches issued now for areas of Ohio into West Virginia. Now, the area he's talking about is still back here in Indiana. You still don't have to be in there to only have a tornado. You can still see strong and severe thunderstorms, even tornadoes, even outside of our watch area. That definitely is a concern, but that area will be pushing eastward as we head on through the evening. And then we head a little farther south. We have another watch here uh, issued until uh, 9 o'clock local time. And then farther south, some good news here for the a metro area, you are no longer in this severe thunderstorm. Watch your stronger storms have pushed east of town, but it does stretch on through middle Georgia and just to the uh, east of Columbus, Georgia. You still have a watch out to 11 o'clock tonight. Looking at the radar, so seeing a few scattered showers here. Some storms in southern Georgia have gone severe. A few more coming up from northern Florida into Georgia have gone severe as well. And a few more are tracking, uh, pushing past uh, Biloxi and Gulfport, heading on towards Mobile over the next, next half hour. They're not severe, but they are pretty strong. A lot of gusty winds coming right off the Gulf as well. We put this in motion as we head throughout the evening. More thunderstorms popping up here across Alabama. We expect some rain showers to move through northern Georgia. In terms of severe weather, we don't expect that tonight, but still can't reel out a couple of isolated rumbles of thunder. But the stronger storms will be in southern Alabama, southern Georgia, and across the panhandle of Florida as we head throughout tonight. Kelly? Well, social media is always evolving, and now it's going to new heights. Coming up from Twitter to the first Vine, we will show you how social media is bringing the greatness of space only a click away. And one couple got pretty hot wedding photos, all thanks to a wildfire burning in Oregon. We'll take a look at that, as well as your top five videos of the day. Stay with us. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy with isolated thunderstorms possible. Low, 74. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms. High, 88. Chance of rain, 60%. Here's our seven-day outlook.
Wearing glasses with just any progressive lenses? See the difference with Verilux, the only progressive lens brand with lenses designed using wave technology. Enjoy smooth transitions and sharp vision. Never compromise. Ask your eye care professional for Verilux. Ask your eye care professional about Transitions Signature Lenses. Check. Hmm. Uh -huh. <gasps> no! Energizer protects your devices from damaging leaks. Machi Panduzzos! Come on, come on, hot burn! When your favorite food starts a fight, Fight back fast with Tums. Heartburn relief that neutralizes acid on contact and goes to work in seconds. Awesome. Amazing. That's epic, bro. Whatever happened to good? Good is choosing not to overshoot the moon, but to land right on it. Good is Maxwell House. Good to the last drop. Mm, avocado bacon omelet. Ooh, a BLT with avocado. Yeah. Fresh avocado, creamy pepper sauce. It's delicious. And it's a great deal. Sounds amazing. But shouldn't that be called a BLTA? Sweetheart, one bite and you're not going to care what it's called. Welcome to Denny's. State officials urge complete evacuation. Severe flooding is expected. It's okay. We're ready. When the things that matter most are on the line, make sure we are too. The storm response team at 1-800-SERP-PRO. Like it never even happened. This Father's Day, let's turn our hero into a superhero. Let's give him the power, consult with his sidekick, and equip him with all the super toys he needs, all on a mild-mannered budget, so he can spend some quality time back in his lair. Then come out strong and save the day. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Real B-Impact driver, drill, batteries, charger, and case, just 99 bucks. What's a born maker made from? From calloused hands, strong backs, from the shoulders of giants, from small steps and giant leaps, big ideas, sharp minds, from steel resolve, from blood, sweat, and gears. All the things that make a born maker made this. Swagger, intelligence, soul. A car that proves a well-made sedan doesn't have to cross an ocean to be worthy of the American road. We are born makers. We made this. The all-new Chrysler 200, America's import. Things have changed. The fun is back. Let cracks and splinters spoil your fun. Bear Deck Over gives new life to old wood and concrete. More than a stain, it extends the life of your deck, fills cracks and covers splinters. Don't replace, resurface. Do the barefoot thing. With Bear Deck Over, exclusively at the Home Depot. Good, better, bear. Okay, guys, updating you on a tornado warning here, or, or several of them, actually. We're kind of peppered with tornado warnings here in Indiana as these storms come out. They're essentially on uh, what we call a, a big line echo wave, and sometimes on the leading edge of that, you can get a quick spin-up like we got here uh, when the storm was to the south of Worthington. Right now, it's moved off to the north. So let's go to the high-resolution radar, Sarah, and see if we can't make heads or tails of this. Right now, what I see as the issue is this complex right here. Okay, this storm, it's moving north of Worthington, and I'll show you why. Uh, airflow's coming in and through here. All right, in the back side of it, it's gusting out, so you got a nice gust front and up on the top of that. This is where the circulation is. It's a little bit broad. Go back one scan, Sarah, because it was tight uh, just to the east of Worthington. You see that? See how, much tight, see how much brighter the reds are and the greens are? So it's a little bit tighter. Normalized rotation also looking very strong here to the south of Worthington. So now jump ahead five minutes and you'll see we lost that. So what's happening is this thing is trying to recirculate itself. And we did have, again, a tornado down to the south of Bloomfield, which is potentially moved off to the north 
north, probably lifted from, from what we gather here on the radar. Zoom out a little bit, Sarah. That scan also has made this a little bit wider. If you live up to the west of uh, Freedom, uh, I'd keep an eye on this. Looks like the circulation itself is trying to uh, reform itself right in through here. You can actually see the... Uh, the gust front pretty nicely, so it's kind of surging out and through here. So with this uh, moving toward the north and toward freedom, uh, let's keep an eye on it. Other than that, let's look at some of these other cells because I haven't really looked at them to the south. The one around Colleen, I'm not really sure why. You know, there's a little bit of rotation with this storm. It looks like it's actually weakening, though. Definitely some broad rotation down near Odom, uh, down through here. We just got a watch issued. And this is, you know, this is kind of right in the, the nose of the jet has kind of come up and through here. So this is a, kind of an area that we're watching. Uh, here for you tonight. This is mostly a severe thunderstorm threat, may get some damaging wind, but we may get also a brief spin up and certainly a brief tornado out of this as it continues to move toward the north. Again, we'll just take this one scan at a time. Uh, about 10 minutes ago, we had a confirmed tornado by law enforcement down to the south of Broomfield. That has now worked its way north and east of Worthington. It's heading up toward the Freedom area. Actually, Sarah, let's time that north storm out because I think that's the biggest threat right now uh, in terms of what we may see as, as, a, as a possible tornado or our, our closest threat. So there's Worthington there. Just do the east side of that since we know where the couplet was and push it off toward the uh, east-northeast up toward 246, also 46 here. Um, and there we go. We're going to kind of time this out for you. So guys, be careful. Uh, the fact that this has produced a tornado, uh, watch out around Freedom and also Vandalia as it uh, continues to pull on off toward the north. We're going to use the Indianapolis radar uh, to keep an eye on this. Also keep an eye on Indianapolis chat. Uh, Jen Watson is going to holler in my ear if we actually get another confirmation on that. So we'll let you know. Right now, again, um, what looks to me like certainly something that's producing some quick spin-ups on a broader sense. Bo uh, is a couple of storms. Uh, again, on this that have uh, produced some damaging wind as well. So that may be uh, ultimately the bigger threat, but we may get a quick spin up, a quick tornado with this. And sometimes, uh, you know, they're just going to be hard to see between scans. Sort of looks like uh, we're starting to see a little surging here down around Newberry. So should, should something else try and develop right here, uh, this is where we would see it probably come up toward fair play. Nice job reading my mind on that, Sarah, up through uh, 157. So that may be the second uh, segment here, guys, that will watch move its way on off toward the north. So a couple of storms here, potentially producing some brief tornadoes across uh, south central Indiana tonight. Let's go over to Paul and Kelly. All right, Jen, thanks so much. You got it. I know you're going to want to see the shark video in our top five. Stick well, let's, around. I do because it's eerily close to the beach. Yes. Let's talk about that. Top five videos. We're rolling with number five. A wedding scheduled for Saturday went on, but there was a wildfire also going on. They kind of shortened the ceremony, but they have some hot pictures to talk about. That was in Bend, Oregon. Number four, as you head to the beach to enjoy the sun. Jim, check this out. Look at these sharks so close to the beach. Yeah, I just did the statistics. Last year, 53 people were bitten by sharks here in the U.S. That's up from like 29 the year before. <laughs> Jim's like, I'm not going there. <laughs> Several reports of tornadoes also in central Colorado. Check out number three. This is one forming over Pikes Peak, Colorado. And number two, we head to Dusseldorf, Germany, and storms were through there and plenty of lightning. Also, uh, so much wind was uh, blowing that the tram had to shut down here in Dusseldorf. Check out number one. This is in Wonsum in the Netherlands. Lightning <laughs> in slow motion. You can really see the fingers of lightning spread out across the sky. Jim likes this one, too. Yeah, That's if you awesome. could upload your video at any time, weather.com slash photos. Anytime you see weather happening or the aftermath of weather, take a picture, take a video, send it to us. Anna. Ready. Now every stop is an opportunity to save gas. And maybe someone's day. Introducing the new fuel-efficient 2014 Malibu with stop-start technology. The car for the richest guys on earth. Start your summer off right and get $2,000 customer cash on every 2014 Chevy Malibu. As a commercial beekeeper, Dave tracks the Weather Channel forecast closely, predicting when crops across the country will bloom and need bees for pollination. At a moment's notice, he loads and trucks thousands of bees, keeping his eye on the weather to ensure his fragile cargo makes it to the blooms on time. When the bees and blooms matter, Dave turns to the Weather Channel.
currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy with isolated thunderstorms possible. Low, 74. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms. High, 88. Chance of rain, 60%. Here's our seven-day outlook. made. Better he learns it here than on the streets. The miracle of bundling. Now that's progressive. Fruit with a cool finish. Fruit on one side, cool on the other. Icebreakers Duo, a fruity cool way to break the ice. For the dad that would do anything for golf, save on anything for golf at the Golfsmith Father's Day event. Awesome is choosing from lots of exciting movies here. Ah, right, baby. <laughs> and enjoying classics here. Get unlimited access anywhere you want, anytime you want. Watch all your favorites commercial free with Stream Picks. Enjoy unlimited access to hit movies on your TV and mobile devices anytime, anywhere. Don't have Stream Picks? Go to the Xfinity On Demand menu or call 1 800 Xfinity to upgrade for only $4.99 more a month. Start watching today. True business grade internet comes with secure Wi-Fi for your business. It also comes with public Wi-Fi for your customers. Not so with internet from the phone company. I would email the phone company to inquire as to why they've shortchanged these customers. But that would require Wi-Fi. Switch to Comcast Business Internet and get two Wi-Fi networks included. Comcast Business. Built for business. 990-8968. Exos Pro is not sold in stores, so call 1-800-990-8968 today. America's Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. Not just a morning forecast, a morning show. AMHQ with Sam Champion, the Weather Channel's brand new morning show. All right, guys, keeping an eye on some pretty active uh, thunderstorms out and through here. I want to show you uh, what's going on in Indiana. Uh, we almost have like a little small-scale vortex uh, spinning around right in through here. And with that, oh, boy, you know what? My, uh, my Telestrator has locked up. That is not good. All right, so Sarah's going to point. All right, Sarah, so you Telestrate for me. Um, so let's go to the tornado warnings first over toward Terre Haute. Keeping an eye on a couple of these storms. I haven't seen anything come in yet on chat that says to me, hey, we've got uh, another tornado on the ground. But uh, it's essentially, you know, this little bow here that uh, continues to drive off to the north and east. And as it does, we've had a couple little spin-ups on the leading edge of that. We'll see how, you know, I, I don't think this is going to be a big tornado threat for Indianapolis. It's probably more of a wind threat, and some of the strong winds are probably coming up uh, through here at the present time versus on the outer side of this. These are moving more parallel with the winds. These are moving more perpendicular. All right, two bows that I want to alert you to that are heading up toward... Uh, Oh, goodness. Chillicothe, that's right, Chillicothe, Ohio, and Col actually Columbus, Ohio, and also Charleston and Parkersburg, West Virginia. So here you can see these two right here. You see how the, they've bent? Both of them almost looks like bird wings right in through here. And we're going to watch these move off to the north. They've warned for the apex of the bow. This will probably move up to Columbus, Ohio in the next uh, hour or so, hour and a half. And we'll watch this move pretty much all along the West Virginia and the Ohio line up toward Parkersburg. We'll keep an eye on that. Also storms to the west of Asheville in North Carolina. Let's go to the tropics here. We'll get out what we can here in terms of this. Here is uh, Tropical Storm Christina. 
spelled with the, the Spanish spelling of Christina here without the H. And you can see here southwest of Zihuantaneo, a little spin up there. Obviously, that is our tropical storm. Continue to move to the west at to 5 miles per hour. Winds are at 50 miles per hour. I'd be shocked if these don't go up in the next advisory, given what we've seen on the satellite. And what we see is a system that is protected around its outside. There's no dry air getting into this, or at least enough of it to choke it. Uh, there's a lot of moisture here, as shown by the water vapor. All the orange, by the way, is where the dry air is. And you can see it's kind of layered on top of it and around it to the north and west of it. So, little flare-ups uh, in and around what is going to be eventually the eye of this hurricane. This is a very well-defined circulation center. You can see the storms developing and also rotating around that circulation center. It's not an eye until it's a hurricane. You can also see uh, what we call cross-banded cirrus on the satellite right out here. So that tells us they're, in other words, they're pointing in a perpendicular angle to the actual comma itself. So you've got uh, a developing situation here. And uh, with that, the outflow channels are pretty open. There's no reason why this shouldn't develop and become a hurricane by tomorrow, which it is forecast to do. So uh, upper level winds in time will stay favorable for development. There may be a little wind shear coming in toward the middle of the week, and you'll notice that right in through here. But really, once we get across this longitude line here south of Cabo San Lucas, that's the cold water. That's what will be the end of Christina. No questions about it. Here's Cabo. The direction that's moving, look at that. You can already see that. Once we get out and through here, we go from the 80s quickly into the 70s. And unless this thing has a really good upper anticyclone, it's going to uh, fall victim to that pretty quickly. And you'll notice the forecast for strengthening is only to a Category 1. That's going to be interesting here through Friday. And then once we get through Saturday, a little bit of that shear starts kicking in, and then boom, we're west of Cabo, and the colder waters take over. Very hostile environment. We've got an upper low here south of Florida. Very active day with showers and storms over the Bahamas, over Cuba as well, even over Florida. As a matter of fact, Central Florida is seeing some storms right now in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, that's more sea breeze really than the upper low, but the upper low is not hurting it. It's helping to evacuate the air. You can see the jet stream. It's cutting over the Yucatan and the Belize, the upper level low over the central U.S. And there, again, as I mentioned, the upper low, which is situated near over Miami right now, nothing tells us that this thing is going to develop. And if you've been looking at the models, which I know a lot of you do, um, especially the American model, really for the last three weeks, we have seen it try and generate something in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Bay of Campeche, over the Yucatan, and pull it north. We certainly have low pressures down there, and certainly climatologically things would be favored there, but nothing tells us that is going to happen. So we look at a lot of different things, including the, uh, uh, the global models, and here's the 18s, the latest run of the American model, developing a bona fide tropical system here and bringing it right to, through the Yucatan Channel. Um, we don't buy that right now, okay? Look at the European model. And so every time the American model gens up something, the European says, now wait a minute, I don't see that. So this is the same time period, eight days out, that you saw the American model. And it doesn't have anything there that suggests we are going to have anything. We think there's going to be a low chance. Uh, should we change our minds on that in the days to come or feel more confident? You'll see our graphics change. You'll see confidence graphics go up uh, in these areas as well. And you also see the Hurricane Center's graphics go up in terms of their probability. So right now, guys, low chances of tropical development in the favored regions of the Atlantic right now. Back to you. All right, Jim, thanks so much, and stay with us. We have one more thing to tell you about tonight. That's coming up right after your Local on the 8th. Stay tuned. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy with isolated thunderstorms possible. Low, 74. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms. High, 88. Chance of rain, 60%. Here's our seven-day outlook.
everyone. We are covering the threat of severe weather. We do have severe thunderstorm watches that continue as late as midnight for some of you in the counties of West Virginia, watching Southern Ohio, Eastern Kentucky, all the way down into Georgia. Atlanta taken out of the watch, thankfully, but just east of Atlanta, we continue to have a severe thunderstorm watch that goes until 11 o'clock Eastern time. We've already had some pretty rough thunderstorms roll on through. We're still following a couple of severe warnings in the southern part of the Peach State. Also watching severe weather in the northeastern part of Tennessee. Thousands without power, by the way, especially in the Knoxville area due to severe weather that rolled through here earlier. Still a line of thunderstorms we are tracking over eastern Kentucky. Severe warnings along that line. The Reds are in a rain delay right now in Cincinnati. Now we take you on in to Indiana where we do have a couple of tornado warnings. Another one just coming in, kind of an extension for Davies and Greene counties till 815 eastern time. This is a tornado warning. This cell moving off toward the north and east. So definitely seek shelter immediately if you live in this area. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Tornado Rally. Tornadoes, the most violent force in nature. But just as powerful as the storms themselves are the beliefs they spawn in survivors. And then everything just starts shaking. I saw Jesus. I believe that I went to heaven after the tornado. Guardian angels, visions of God, visits from deceased loved ones. Hearing that there are paranormal events following these traumas doesn't surprise me at all. The angel touched me right here. These are the believers. Oh my God. Whose traumatic experiences in the eye of the storm convinced them there was something divine in those 200 mile per hour winds. May 22nd, 2011 in Joplin, Missouri. It was a sunny day in this rural town of 49,000 people. But as the clock ticked closer to 5 p.m., the sky grew dark and hail fell to the ground. It would be no ordinary thunderstorm. The tornado warning itself goes for the counties just west of the Missouri border. At 5.17 p.m., 25 tornado sirens hailed the first warning. Within 45 minutes, the tornado had raised a 22-mile path across town. More than 25% of the city was wiped off the map, and 158 people were dead. The Joplin tornado. You see the damage that's done there, and it's unfathomable. You have a town one day, and then the next day there's no town. Joplin was the most destructive type of tornado possible, an EF-5. Nothing in Joplin should have survived a direct hit, especially not two young girls that got swept into its deadly vortex. Emily Huddleston and Mason Lillard were in different parts of Joplin when the tornado hit, but both believed they were saved that day by an angel. The day of the tornado, it was pretty exciting because my brother was graduating. Right before we left for the graduation, I remember looking at my room thinking I was forgetting something. And now that I look back at it, it was kind of just the last time I'd ever see it the way it was. The day of the tornado, we went to church like we normally do on Sundays. 